What's next? So, well, it, the rest of March, it said there was an ad in Drag News um, saying you're pre-entered for a race in Fontana, but we have no info, don't have a clue if anybody showed up, it rained out, it just was never, and you can't go back, you can't recover that information if it wasn't if it wasn't put in there, just there's absolutely no info. So it, and where we is that? Know. And where is that uh, um, that thing that you put in that stanked everybody? And then at the very bottom it says we're available for booking. And here's after after winning the big race. Um, now it's time to go on tour because that's what you did. And. Um, a lot of guys went on tour, but um, you got paid to show up if you were somebody. And so this was the phone number to put out there to show that now we're somebody. Uh, pay us and we'll be there. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> that match race with the Hawaiian at um, Irwindale. Yeah. Um, they were running real, real well. We were running well. Well, they'd won the Winter Nationals. The Pomona. Okay, so the Winter Nationals. They've just won the Winter Nationals. Right. They've won Bakersfield. So right. The two, so, the two top dogs in the country, right yeah. there. So they've got a match race, and this is when Jim Blake was running. Um, uh, Irwindale, great guy, the late Jim Blake, and uh, I think Steve Gibbs is working at Irwindale at this point. I'm not, I know he is. And uh, anyway, so we have this match race. It's a two out of three with the Hawaiians. And so we win the first two rounds. And so we had some extra, uh, an extra set of Goodyear tires that we wanted to test uh, that Goodyear gave us. And they warned us, they said, these things are really gonna smoke. Uh, but the ET might be fine. Uh, it's an experiment. We'd like you guys to go run these things. So maybe if you get a chance where it doesn't matter, you put these on and make a run, right? So, okay, so we take this extra set of tires and wheels with us to Irwindale. So we're gonna make a third run just to test these tires. So Keith Black, um, he came, he went over to Bob Skinner and, and Mike and said, hey, if you guys are gonna make a third run, could we run alongside just so we could get another run too? And Bob and Mike, they were so pleased that just to won the two out of three, they said, no, we won't do that, right? So I was off wandering around. So pretty soon, here comes Keith. He's looking for me. So he, he pitches me on the story of him running the, the third, uh, this extra run with us. And uh, said, OK. Um, yeah, we can do that, but you got to go up, and you, Keith Black, you need to go get in up on with the announcer in the in the tower, get on the microphone and tell the crowd what's going on here. That you, this isn't the third race of this two out of three. The two out of three is over. Is over. Um, so that the crowd doesn't think that this is. Something phony or whatever, yeah. Or that it went to three rounds. It didn't go to three rounds. Right. It was over in two. And you yes. want to make sure the crowd knows that. Yeah, and understand, yeah. He said, if you'll go do that, then I says, I'll go. If that's okay with you, I'll go see if I can get Bob and uh, Mike to agree to this. And he said, okay. So I went and talked to Bob and Mike. I says, I says we got a chance to really kill them here. You know, if we can get all three. And... Uh, he'll go get on the mic and explain the whole thing. And Keith is a very honorable guy. And of course it isn't going to happen if he doesn't. I mean, right. There's no choice. And so anyway, true to his word, Keith went up and gets on the microphone, explains the whole situation. We get out there and we make another run. And in this picture, I suppose there's a better one than this. Um, our car's in the back. And it is smoking the tire. Just uh, normally, with that much smoke, the car would just not go anywhere. Right. Free wheeling. Yeah. It'd be like a burnout, a modern day burnout. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it says here that we ended up we, the elapsed times for the three of the three runs were 756, 757, and 757. <laughs> um, 
So the tires obviously worked out all right, even as scary looking as they were. Even as smoky as they were. Yeah. That's pretty But consistent. anyway, it shows you what a class act uh, Keith is. That he actually went up and said, we're going to do this one for fun. We already lost. Yeah, and then we lucked out and won the <laughs> And then you won the thing three straight. That car ran good, the Hawaiian. Yeah, the and what an interesting contrast because this is after Bakersfield in 66. We watched the Hawaiian make passes that had very little smoke, especially in qualifying. I have movies of it, and I'll show that right here. And I'm sure that that run that you guys had, where you had the tires that made lots of smoke, and they're going down with hardly any smoke, and you guys still won, it's like this... The, the, the two different styles converging and kind of like almost like a last gasp effort of the smoke run era to still win over cars that were hooking up and not smoking the tires. And you can see normally Mike Soroka would he would leave first on almost anybody. Right. But Mike Snidely was driving the other car. He's, he's out in front. Right. Or they're very even yes, somehow. Yes, right. Snidely quit lash. Nobody's yeah. got an advantage on anybody no. on right. the starting line. Well, well, Snyder's probably there. ahead in that picture. Right. Yeah. What, was, what was the second picture, Rod? Mm -hmm. The second picture is just them getting, getting ready to go, maybe. Oh, this is that match race. Oh, okay. The announcer is Mel Rick. Yeah. And they're hyping, you know, get the cars down by the starting line and introduce them to the crowd and just yeah. get everybody to get up there. And Pumping them up. Yep. Cool. Okay. Got it. It could be okay. Fun. Very good story. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, here's a. He qualified and had clutch problems. He towed all the way to Fresno and had a problem with the clutch. Okay. So took care of that. Which is, uh, yeah, but amazing. You guys didn't have a lot of problems with parts. No. I mean, you had this, you had this engine thing all worked out, so you were not hurting it, and. And I'm sure the way you took everything apart every week, that clutch thing was just a uh, a freak deal and not something you overlooked. You apparently because didn't have you it worked out. Didn't have well. quite worked out yet. <laughs> We've moved on to May because the world the the world is rotating no matter what we do, and another month and. <clears throat> Some of the, and Don appreciates this, some of the ads that came out in Drag News where they have the surfers smackdown. and the, yeah, the Smackdown and the, <laughs> the bear and the this, that everybody had a, everybody had a nickname and uh, the pictures of them, you know, they, they were starting to be promoted now and that's, the ads in Drag News showed all that. There was the cam wars and the engine wars, and there were the match races, and then the the trash talking, and you know it was a w wonderful time. And of course, being a young man in that, Southern California, that, that I was, believed it all. That was the yeah. best one ever done there. <laughs> that. And this one is is pretty good. Here's Mike surfing and the uh, mongoose trying to get him on the other surfboard. Can we see that? Yeah. Yes. You can see that wow, yeah. it's a whole, very good, a whole thing about yeah. you know that smack talking. <laughs> that lion Saturday night. Yep, very good. And these ads were in there every week. You know the who's the baddest of the bad right now? And on um, here's the mongoose says, "I feel this past year the surfers have done fairly well, winning Bakersfield." And a couple other typically small things. So we decided they finally earned a shot at the title. That is, if they show up, they don't take the easy way out and red light the mongoose with Yakel car. Yeah, it was build wonderful. It, up. it was, yeah. you know, you Smack opened that up and said, all right, I got to yeah, go see Yeah, we got to go that. We, we got to go, go because, it. boy, these are two guys that are just going to hate each other and just, yeah. yeah, and it was wonderful. Yeah. It was just totally wonderful. Yeah. And every week it was something new. Yep. And whoever was the baddest of the bad at the time yep. got got the stuff. Those were the days. On, on that uh, match race, yeah. uh, Tom McEwen was behind though. He kind of organized the whole thing and coordinated it. He said, okay, I'm going to put this in 
this cartoon in and say this, and now you guys put in one that say this, yeah, say that, or oh, yeah. whatever. And, you know, he kind of he was real good at organizing this kind sure. of stuff. So we do that, and uh, and it was all in good fun. So we show up, and that week we were exceptionally broke, and for whatever reason, uh, we had to put a new crankshaft in our engine, and we, we didn't have time or money to go get it uh, balanced. Yeah. So it was going to shake a little bit. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm, what you would do is, all during the week, you'd do everything you could possibly do to get your stuff ready, and then on Friday night or Saturday morning, you'd screw it all together, and wow, off you'd go with whatever the best stuff you had, right? So anyway, we show up, and the thing, we know it's going to shake, and so Mike knows it's going to shake. And um, what else? Did we have some other issue, too? I don't know. We, we had some other little issue, but we thought, uh, okay, so this is, this is what we got. Let's see how it works out. So on the way down, we're driving down to Long Beach from Santa Monica, and so we're thinking about what could we do to really upset them or... or <laughs> Just, you know, just mess with them a little bit. Mess and, with them. Uh, they're, they had the best mechanic in the world, John Garrison. Yeah. He, he was their full-time mechanic. He actually was employed and he had a job. Wow. Which I couldn't believe. I mean, yeah. he paid to have fun. Anyway, so John Garrison, uh, he liked everything to be really organized. And if anything was out of, out of whack, it kind of upset him a little bit mm -hmm. or, or throw him off his game yeah throw him yeah. off his game a little bit yeah so we thought well why don't we do this we'll take back then there was before the starters electric starters and stuff you pushed it to get it started right, right. so when we f warm it up on alcohol we'll push it and we'll just pull up right next to where they're working on their car and just abandon the car just leave it there running no <laughs> no way yeah <laughs> and <laughs> So, yes. Um, and the, the, the deal was that Mike would wait X number of minutes, then he'd come over, just reach in, hit the knife switch to shut it off, and right. then leave again. So the car's just abandoned, with people just standing there like, what's going on here, right? And, but do it right, as close as we can get. So it worked out perfect. We, at Long Beach, you pushed on the return road coming back towards the pit area. You turned into the pit area. It pulled up within maybe, I don't know, 10 feet or... Wow. 15 feet of their where they're working on uh -huh. the because there was no pit area. I mean, organized you parking just, spots. You yeah, just it's just wherever, wherever you ended up. Anyway, so here's the thing running, and everybody's looking at everybody like, well, what happens now? You know, because we just left. Just put the clutch <laughs> board in and get out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we just, we leave. Damn. And it's Jeez. just running, and people are standing around and looking at it, and it's just running. It's just running. And you did have just the clutch, the clutch board in it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't remember that. Well, <laughs> Pat Foster tells the story, or the late Pat Foster yeah. really told a good version of the oh, story because he was there and he said it, it just blew him away because yeah. he had no idea what was coming either. Sure. So anyway, it really messed with with uh, Garrison, Garrison, and oh, McEwen God, and yes. Bainey maybe I don't know who would. Oh how, yeah. How how everybody responded to it because we weren't there. We just I was off talking to popcorn pan down at the <laughs> really <laughs> wow concession stand and you were in line to talk to popcorn pan. I guarantee it. Well, no, they were all down there. Oh, they're watching this car run by itself. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, <laughs>